All right. So we got a Trinity, we got Harrow, we got Volt, and we got uh, DPS Volt, which I am because I'm host. All right. So we're going into planes directly, and um, by going into planes, well, you can go into the Cetus and then go into the planes if um, you get in host migration often. Because uh, going from Cetus to the planes will not uh, cause a host migration to happen. And um, we're just in the planes earlier than we need to be. Um, one second, actually. Shoot. Shoot. So, um, I said do something real quick. Um, okay. So... Oh, darn it, now I have to do this. Okay, so we're in the planes earlier than we need to be because um, all the other players are using Matarai. And um, they're using Matarai, so the longer they're in void mode, as you see, Coot here is in Matarai. Uh, sorry, in, in, um, in void mode. And the longer he's in void mode, the more he's going to get damage. He's going to have eight shots of Matarai Void Strike. Void Strike is a skill in Matarai that um, he's charging up. And the longer he's in void mode, the more damage he's going to get. So if everyone's getting this multiplier, except for the host, the DPS is not going to be using Matarai. I'm going to be using Unaru. So um, I'm going to be um, producing Wisps and all that stuff. But they're in the, they're charging up void mode. Sorry, charging up void strike in void mode. And um, the longer they're in void mode, the more damage they get. So with them getting all that multiplier damage, they're going to be able to one-shot the Eilon. As you see, there's nighttime in six minutes, five minutes. So um, I'm just going to wait, and um, they're going to be able to have enough damage to one-shot those shields. So that will um, guarantee, um, well, the one-shotting if they're in void mode the whole time. You don't have to go 10, 15 minutes early. That's a misconception. As well as um, DPS needing a ribbon, that's a misconception as well. Um, I'll be explaining how to DPS in just a, a, a moment. Um, let's see here. So, my first ability on Volt is um, Shock, which I have the augment called Shock Trooper on. Shock Trooper, when I hold down the first ability, I get as much um, electricity equal to my strength on my build. So I have 254 strength. That's pretty common to see DPS is having that strength. It's a very solid. Because um, all we need from the Shock Trooper is the electricity. This electricity is going to fuse with any elements I have on my my weapons. So for example, I have uh, just heat on my uh, Rubico, my sniper, which the heat and the electricity from my Shock Trooper will fuse to make radiation. Now, yes, shields give you electricity, but hit scan weapons through a shield will not give me um, radiation if I just had heat on my weapon because these shields give me a separate element of element of electricity since I'm using a hit scan. Now, if I was using projectile weapon, this would be fine because um, using projectile weapon through a Volt's third ability shield will fuse the electricity into any other elements. But if I'm using a hit scan, it will not fuse. Um, multiple shields does n it just adds more electricity. It does not add more crit damage multiplier. 200% crit damage multiplier through a shield. Even though I'm using a hit scan weapon, I am still going to get 50% extra electricity per shield I shoot through. But uh, it, more damage is more damage, but it's not make or break idea. Using your first ability on a shield is going to do nothing. It makes it look pretty, and any Vombolus or any enemy that actually goes near a shield will get shocked. Not necessary. Okay, we have three minutes. Cool, cool. Okay, so I'm using my second ability on my um, my Volt, a speed, and that's going to give me more movement speed, reload speed, and it also persists while I'm in Arcwing. Makes me get to locations faster. The third ability, I just mentioned that. I want to shoot through that, um, that as much as... Um, possible to give me that 200% crit damage and um, I'm using vigorous swap so if I swap my weapons as you see I have vigorous swap here and vigorous swap is 165% extra damage for the three seconds so I swap my weapons as fast as possible 
and I got my uh, bigger swap going. Doesn't matter how long I have my secondary weapon out for. All right. Yes, I could use Helmuth on my fourth ability, but I choose not to. You don't need Helmuth. Um, if you choose to do like a ribbonless build, then yeah, slap on Rhino or whatever you want to do for more damage. All right. So DPS is going to get the very first lure. And um, these colorful waypoints, these are lock pins. You get them from the Tenor Lab and the Dojo. And you can place up to 15 of them in the planes. Every time I enter the planes, they're always going to be there, guys. Always, always, always. Until I destroy them. Like this one here. I named it You Wish Me and I'll Bless You. And um, you can just edit it after you place it down from your gear wheel. And uh, you can show on HUD. So you make the color whatever you want. This one's red. Or this one's black. And the red one's here. All right. So host timer is the only one that's going to be exactly precise. So just um, keep that in mind. And um, there is a um, a modifier whenever you are zooming in. So whenever I hold down right click or aim down the sights, you see on the right hand side, crit damage. Adding negative or positive zoom is not going to affect this at all. But each tier of zoom I go, see how it changes? So always be max zoom with your sniper. There's also another part of snipers, which I will not explain just yet until I'm fighting the, um, the enemy. So as long as you have all your buffs up, it's actually the most potent part about DPS as well. It's the, the next part I'm going to be explaining about... Um, it's called a shot combo counter, or combo counter is what I'm going to refer to it as. All right. So, let's see here. 50 seconds. My timer seems to be off by a little bit. All right, instance is bad. Nice, Kinsen. So as long as I have all my buffs up, I should be easy to do this with that ribbon. Of course, I'm using radiation damage, which um, gives me 75% extra percent damage against the enemy. Um, he has that, and the enemy we're fighting is Island. He has alloy armor, which means that um, it's strong, a weak against um, radiation. 75% extra damage with an enemy with radi uh, alloy armor on. So I'm going to use my second ability, go in Arcwing. Remember, guys, if you strip off all the um, Eidolon's um, armor, the Eidolon has no armor. So he's not weak against radiation anymore. Okay. Refer to my other video if you want to um, know how I quick charge that lure. Okay, I'm going to be spawning Wisps. Since I'm using a narrow, I'm going to be Void Blasting the enemy to get my, um, to summon a wisp. Every time I void blast, you see that little circle right here, that, that little X? That little X is telling you you're spawning a wisp. And I'm going to be spawning those as much as possible. So, let's go over um, shot combo, um, the combo counter here. So you see how I'm aiming down the sights? You see this thing right here, shot combo? The big number is how much multiplier of damage I'm doing. The bottom number is, i sorry, the, then to the right of that, you see a little smaller number. That smaller number is how many bullets went into the enemy. So every sniper has a different combo rate. For, for, uh, for example, the Rubico is like 75 shots, I think. So, um, eight, I think it's like 80 some for a 3.5 multiplier but not all snipers are 80 shots for a 3.5 multiplier okay um, lure manager should be grabbing two lures and dropping them off for the DPS before the last limb of the island has been broken this way as a DPS, I'm charging up lures, but I'm also um, 
picking I'm picking them up and also charging them up. A good way to charge them up is um, well look for Vombolus. Don't rely on the Vombolus that spawn underneath the Eilon when he stands up. Three bombs will also spawn underneath the Eilon when you um, when when he when the last limb of the Eilon has been broken. So when the last limb of the Eilon has been broken. Three Vombolus will spawn. You gotta destroy those Vombolus fast. If you do not destroy the Vombolus fast, then the Eilon will gobble them up and he restores health for as many Vombolus as he sucks up. At the shrine, good time to um, cast your buffs. DPS should, or host I should say, it should be the very first person put it in. If you're not the first, put it in last. There's a common bug where if host and client put their shards in the same time, what happens is it bugs out and it only registers three of them. Everyone would have to take their shard out until visually there is no shards and then there's still a shard in the shrine so you're going to have to, uh, well, take that out as well but you're not going to know there's one shard in there until someone prompts to take it out. It's, it's a very finicky bug but to solve this post puts it in first or last. So I'm always keeping that combo counter up and putting down wisps. Very important. Those wisps are going to get, wisps are going to grant whoever picks it up 100% extra damage for the next 12 seconds. This is with their amp, so that's how the shields are going down so quickly. Is um, combination of uh, my wisp and their matter void strike with um, arcanes on their amp, which is virtuous shadow. Um, I'm always making sure I have my buffs active every second limb or so, depends on your duration really. I just tend to um, activate it every second limb, my first and second ability, and um, I'll put down a shield once in a while. Now, spawning wisps, remember guys, the wisps is a single, um, a server side it's single time pick upable. So I'm putting down wisps as soon as I break down the first, like a limb. I put down wisps until the magnetic spike happens from the Eilon. Whenever the magnetic spike happens, I'll either reload my weapon, um, cast abilities, get more combo counter up, anything I want. After that, I'll start putting down more wisps. Like I said, it's a single time use item. So if one person picked up all the wisps on their screen, there'd be no more wisps for anyone else to pick up. And um, so by putting down two layers of wisps, like I just done there, I'm able to guarantee that at least two people can pick them up because if one person picked up all the wisps then it won't matter since there's another layer of wisps coming down. And the reason why I do it during the magnetic spike is for the fact that if you get hit with the magnetic spike in operator then you can't go back into operator and um, that may cause some problems. So make sure my buffs are active, I swap my weapons before I shoot. And make sure I'm zoomed in. Now, teleporting lures, very simple. You see how the loot's always in the position that we want it to be. Well, how we do this is if the lure is 100 meters or farther away, or the pathfinding has been broken, um, the location that we're at, the lure will spawn to us. The lure will not spawn to us in this condition, no matter if even both of the uh, conditions are met. The lure will still not spawn to us if the spot that the uh, lure is trying to teleport to is congested. So if that place is already taken up by an enemy or a teammate, see, I, I went in void mode. I cannot go back into void mode. So I'm just choosing to be putting down more wisps than I need, uh, more wisps. I'm just continuously putting down wisps. This is going to drain my energy um, a lot from the fact that uh, I'm getting nullified. Uh, so I'm putting down energy pads. I'm able to put down energy pads without going in gear wheel by um, setting it to a hockey. So how do you set it to a hockey? Is um, going to options and uh, key configurations. And in the key configurations, you can set um, anything on your gear wheel to be anything on the slot wheel. But just keep in mind that anything from slot 1 to 12 can be applied, not anything farther. 
So slot one, I see slot 12 and slot one. Anything in between there can be applied. And I'm stuck. Oh, sorry, buddy. Get my wisps, get my combo counter up. Uh, also, keep in mind that your shot combo counter will decay if you're not shooting in an, at an enemy, or hitting an enemy, I should say. And also, when you miss your shot, as you see here, um, see a little number? It's, it's it's decaying already, but um, if I shoot a bunch, you see how it's going down really fast? This only goes down by one if I miss, but if I hit an enemy, the more multi-shot I have, the higher it goes up each instance I hit. And this is dependent on how many bullets here that's coming out of your gun. All right, shield, shock trooper. I may as well have a fast reload. I can I can get my combo counter up. Don't be focusing on your combo counter until you have the correct amount of lures attached to the Eilon that is necessary for capture. Each Eilon is different. Um, the terrorist need requires two fully charged lures. One fully charged lure will attach the two synovias or limbs when I'm breaking off of the Eilon. And the um, Guileless is, is six synovias, and since one fully charged lure only attached to two limbs, um, then we're gonna need three fully charged lures for the Guileless and the Hygelist. Um, but remember that you want to prefer have one extra lure fully charged. As you remember back, the Trinity dropped me off two lures. And that's because one um, when we're attached to two, we need all the limbs attached, and the terrorist only needs two fully charged lures since he only has four synovias. So since the terrorist has four synovias, we need two fully charged lures, and one lure is not attached to the Eilon, which means that if it's not attached, then the um, it's not going to blow up if it's not attached. Down my wisps. There we go. I can use my first and second ability in Volt while aiming down the sights. Really nice to know. Get my combo counter up. So on the Guileless, you prefer to have four fully charged lures. Okay. You see how I'm getting this little yellow X, right? Um and get spawning the wisp like I mentioned earlier. Just remember that if you crawl in his leg, you're not going to pick up your own wisps. And also, the wisps are not going to spawn underground. On Hygel on God and Hygelus, depending on the spot, even Terrorist, like depending on that location of the Eidolon, uh, sometimes the wisps can spawn underground, and that's no good at all. So, because no one can pick them up if they go underground. And um, what I, to, to guarantee that they're not going to fall underground, just crawl on his knee. Honestly, it's the best way to prevent this from happening. Combo counter going up. Okay. DPS should be the only one breaking the bombs underneath the island as he falls down and stands up. Okay. I just have noticed I have a, um, a dragon key on the shield one decaying. <laughs> okay. And I'm putting sure in first. The reason why um host should put it in first is because um host is literally a host. They are um they're the server. This game is P2P guys. So with it being P2P, um, that means that, well, I am the server, and 
I have zero ping. And that allows me to um, put it in before anyone else has a prompt to even put it in. If I get hit with the magnetic spike on the second layer of wisps, it doesn't matter because I'm not going back into operator for some time. But um, getting hit with that magnetic spike won't allow me to go back into operator at all for a few moments. So I just, well, get my combo counter up or whatever I need to do and then go back in. But getting hit with the second layer, getting hit with the magnetic spike in the second layer is not going to be the end all, of, if anything. One lure is all is required to hold the idle in position, no matter how many limbs are broken. It has to be fully charged, of course. To fully charge a lure, um, you need three charges in it. You can tell how many charges are in a lure. Zero charges in a lure will mean that no antennas are glowing. One charge in a lure will mean uh, will show that there's one um, antenna glowing. These antennas here, and when there's Two charges, two lure, uh, two antennas be glowing, and then when there's three charges, the lure turns blue. A uh, little shield on it turns blue. A yellow shield on a lure, no charges. Well, no, no charges to two charges in it. Now, there's two ways to charge up a lure. A lot of people don't know about the second method. But I'll tell you the first one right now. The first method is um, getting a, a Vombolus in ethereal mode. So, see that blue specter ghost over here? That blue specter version of the Vombolus, if it's within five meters of an uncharged lure, it'll suck it up and get a charge. The second method is if I completely destroy a lure. So I'll show you what I mean here. I oh, sorry, completely destroy a Vombolus. See this little orb here? If I pick this up, I'll start shimmering. I can pick up two. I pick up one in my operator and my uh, Warframe. So now I can go within five meters of an uncharged lure after I pick this up and I will insert that charge into the closest lure that I was um, near. Like wherever one is five meters first kind of idea. Alright. So it's a good way to know which way to directly charge your lure, and also, um, you know, like, it's, it just helps you out knowing that you can see the antennas glowing and um, pick up the orb and know which one to actually put in. All right. Let's see here. You can just void dash up and then just be placing your wisps down and then get your combo counter up, of course, and then dash back up and then put your wisps down again. It's a viable method. Whatever side limb I break off the idol on, he will follow the opposite direction. This is good to know if you're doing um, fast enough runs where you can um, break the shield with, well, the other players are breaking the shield with void damage, and then the um, DPS is able to break the limb fast enough so he doesn't start moving everywhere. And um, doing that will allow the shield breaker Volt to be placing down half as many shields. You see, the longer he's in Warframe, the less multiplier of uh, Matarai Void Strike he's going to accumulate. So by ensuring that he stays in void mode as much as possible, ensures that he's going to be able to output as much damage as possible. Every time you break a limb off the Eidolon, there's always going to be energy and health and um, ammo. So, like I said, you're, you're spamming the Eidolon to get that combo counter up. Well, you can get that ammo and keep on, keep on going. You don't have to be continuously putting down ammo pads, and you don't have to be using as many energy pads as I am. Okay. All right. 
You can leave your empty Warframe at the gate. This will hold the door open and collect the loot as an operator. Remember guys, the very first lure attached to the Eilon is the one that breaks with loot. And also, the host is the only person that has to leave the gate, which should be DPS. So they would uh, oh, roll the gate, come back in, that's it. Everyone else is staying inside the gate waiting for the load. And then we're back in. Okay. Let's see here. Oh, there's three. Um, how you doing? Uh, Harley Gellin. How you doing, dude? Put my wisp down. All right. That very first, uh, that quick charge, or how I got the lure and the vombalus so fast, that's considered QC or quick charge. And um, you got you guys can type that in chat if you want or whatever, and um, it'll show you the quick charge method from my YouTube. All my commands are always available offline or online stream. I stream every day, eight hours a day. And um, I do island hunts and I explain what I'm doing. If you have any questions, I can explain it live because that's what I do on Twitch. Okay. Um, oh yes, there's something nice I can explain here real quick. So, um, Last limb. Okay, I'm gonna break any bombs if they're spawning. Sometimes they don't even spawn. So if they don't spawn, then I'm gonna have to start looking for Bombalus. Cold snap and Itzel. Perfect. Sentient energy contained. You are closing on victory. Act now. All right, get my buffs up. The lures ha will attach if they're 45 meters or closer to the Eilon. Blow up the Bombalus so I might be able to get a charge. Use my second ability, go on Arcwing and fly to the location, which is the shrine. So Intrinsics at level eight will um, allow you to um, go faster in the planes. Um, for example, the cooldown on my blank and the health and the flight speed itself. Right on, man. Okay. Um, nice to hear. How long have you stopped playing Warframe for? Mr. Um, Harley? I, oh my goodness, see, I did not have a fully charged lure. So now, I I should have had a fully charged lure, but I, that was neglect right there. That's all right. So we didn't have a fully charged lure attached to the Eilon. Won't attach if it's not fully charged. That's all right. And we're going to the Eilon. All righty. I'll put down a shield for my uh, shield breakers. <laughs> put down some wisps. Alright. That was a womp womp. <laughs> I thought I had it charged. And that's, that's the trick about DPS. It, it's the hardest roll out of the four rolls there is. Because you gotta manage your buffs. You got to um, be teleporting your lure. You got to be... Um, Quick charging, and you can't be killing the Eilon. If you destroy the last piece of the Eilon's health, um, and there's not all, all the Synovias or all the limbs I'm breaking attached by a fully charged lure, you will kill the Eilon. If you kill the Eilon, what happens is um, the um, you can't you can't advance the next Eilon. Basically, 
you have to capture the Eilon. Um, so, um, four rolls, tank, no. Um, the four rolls, there's a Volt putting down shield. He's like a support. Uh, I guess Harrow's the support, because he, he nullifies all the magnetic waves and grants the DPS the 50% extra crit chance. Um, and then, or up to 50%, depending on how much damage he takes. And then the, um, Trinity's there to keep the lures alive, like a lure manager. And then you got, um, Volt amplifying the, the, um, operator's amp damage. And then you got Volt as a DPS as well, for myself. Alright, so if you don't have all the limbs attached by fully charged lure, um, and you destroy the Eilon's last bit of health, in this phase, when he stands up, then you will kill it, and the island will drop the loot. If the island drops the loot, you killed it. If you if the lures pop with the loot, you captured it. You can tell you captured it by knowing, seeing that you have all the lures here. And if I have all lures um, attached to the island that is needed, which is three fully charged lures in the gaunt, preferably four, so you can advance the next stage of the hiccups. Um, then the um, sorry, then the uh, Island be captured, and the loot will come from the lures. 15 seconds after the cap has the final bit of damage, the lures will break the loot. Now, you'll notice how, how I know I always know where the island's going to be spawning out of the water. How I know this is from how many dashes I do out. I dash out straight. One, two, three, four. I'm on top of the energy beam. I go to the right. So. I can determine of how many dashes I do straight out from the, the shrine towards the end of the lake to determine where the island's spawning, on which side of the lake he is, and where he is, um, by knowing this little simple rule. One da uh, two dashes straight, he's to the right. Three dashes straight, he's to the left. Four dashes straight, he's to the right, and any more straight, he He's at the very end of the lake. Um, There's something important I was going to say, but I, I can't remember right now. Oh, it's the energy from the last uh, shard being put in. That's when you stop. So if you're right on top of it, or if it's like a, a meter in front of you, then you would just stop and then turn to the location. And then of course, um, be um, getting your wisp wisps down. Okay. Reload it. Put in my shield. Your swap. Alrighty. Breaking those bombs to spawn underneath them. And then I can grab the little orb. Helps us uh, be able to defeat the island faster, but since the island's not gaining health from the bombless being sucked up when he falls. All right. Let's see here. Okay, so I have a worm um, on, and it's using the mod negate. Negate is great, but the reason why I'm using the wor um, a sentinel at all is because of the um, the vigilante mods. All the vigilante mods you can put on the set on your um, your sentinel is uh, going to increase the crit enhance critical hits by 20% if I have all the ones I can fit on the on the on the sentinel's weapon I'm using death the machine rifle if I'm not mistaken and that is going to enhance the critical hits so if I got a yellow crit it'll be an orange crit at 20% of the time which is a lot more damage now um, so it's times two damage. Oops. Now, the reason why I'm using the worm in particular, well, the worm has a mod called Negate. And Negate will, uh, prevent the next status effect 
every five seconds. So, if I get hit with a status effect, whenever I get hit with a status effect, it's going to stop that status effect from happening. And then, there's going to be a little cooldown on the top right of my, my screen here. It's going to be like a red cooldown. And it will indicate that it was procced and it's now kind of recharging idea. It's given that five seconds. Oh, well, I guess I knocked down. It will not prevent the knockdowns in operator, by the way. Um, nothing will. The, um, see how this little thing here, five seconds going down? That is, um, negate. So during that five seconds, I can get status procced, which is magnetic spike. And, um, a lot of people don't know this, but make um getting knocked down is a status effect guys so just keep that in mind if you don't want to get knocked down in warframe it's a good way to go about it yeah exclamation mark enter space max guys um and that will enter you in the giveaway just always give away when i'm playing warframe and i play warframe six days out of the week Estimation for prize to see the prizes. 100 points per entry. Your first follows were 500 points. The longer you watch the channel, more points you guys get. Check your points with estimation for points. All right, we got our lures fully charged. So when the the whoever's gathering the lures, usually Trinity, would not come back to the island until I have my lures fully charged. Since there's no priority of charging lures, if for example, if one lure has two charges in it, it doesn't matter. Another, all your lures, all the lures could get two charges in it, and we won't have enough charges to get a fully charged lure. And then, well, we'd have to wait before we kill it, or, you know what I'm saying? Get those Synovias attached so we can proceed to a capture. Okay. Two, two dashes on top of the energy. That device is insufficient. Okay. You are directed to secure and deploy additional Eidolon lures. You can use Sarpa to trim down the Eidolon's armor, but just make sure that you do not strip all of it, like I mentioned earlier. If the Eidolon has no armor, he's not weak against radiation anymore. So that would not be the best bet to go about. Positioning is key for a DPS. You, you want to know that you can hit a limb, especially if it's your last limb, you want to be in position to hit that limb. Is it better 3-2-3 uh, three, three, or 1-2-3? Well, the term is X-2-3 for someone that's getting their amp solely from Anku. And um, an X-2-3 is perfect, which is a 1-2-3-2. Two, three, two, it, it's just uh, X is a variable. I, I would personally suggest a 1-2-3 one, one, for, um, for um, someone getting Dylons, especially if they haven't leveled up with Anku at all, since the very first... Um, the very first uh, um, reward from Anku is the first tier prism scaffold embrace. And that will allow you to um, claim the tier one uh, prism. And that is the Raplak. And then the second time you level up with Anku, you get the choice of the tier two prism scaffold embrace, which you're going to preferably collect the second tier scaffold. If, if you don't, if you miss it the first time, you can always get it with the standing, right? And then you can go with the third tier the next time, which would save you the daily standing of getting that standing to purchase the blueprint from Anku. Um, they're immediately breaking the shields with um, their amp, the secondary fire, and they're also um, charging up Matarai Void Strike with um, with um, Virtuous Shadow Arcane on their amp. 
and they're picking up the wisps that I'm dropping. They're literally just shooting straight out or hitting the ground and making it deton they're, they're amp detonate a little faster than straight out like this. See, that takes a lot longer to blow up than this. Of course, shooting through a shield will prevent the knockback of your amp. Um, which focus am I on? I'm a DPS and I'll be using Unero with Unero Wisp active. Every time I Void Blast, I'm spawning a Wisp. They're shooting through a shield. His HP is just still gray. His HP is not gray when he's coming out of the water. Only the Terror List is. Even when you even when you relocate the Eidolon, pretend we didn't have a fully charged lure attached to the Eidolon, um, you can still break his shields when he's coming out of the water from him teleporting. The only time you cannot is... There's two times. So the very first Terror List, as he's walking out of the water, you cannot hurt him. You gotta wait. And then... Um, when the blooms, the Vombalus blooms, or the bloom, the little pink, um, the pink orbs that come around the planes to spawn the bombs, or spawn some bombs, um, they will spawn the bombs, and too many bombs near the Eidolon will cause them to go immortal. Yes. Yeah, you have to be an operator in order to see the actual, um, like E-Boomer said, you have to be an operator in order to see um, his shield. As you see here. Oh, I can't go and operate. I got hit with that magnetic spike. <laughs> Sorry, boys. Yeah, but um, once the shield's broken, then you can deal, use any type of damage, preferably radiation, of course, to break the Synovias. Or his last bit of health, wherever you want to damage him. But I'm using uh, Unaro, and uh, that's just to spawn Wisps down. I Void Blast, as long as I'm getting that little hitbox, that little marker. The red one just means I'm hitting the hitbox of the island's head. No, yours is too shiny. I don't like mine. All right. Oh. If uh, lures are really close to the, the stairs like this, the loot will go up there. If they're farther back, then they will not. It's just a common thing that happens. Yes. So there's two way bandable skills in every school tree. Thank you. Reminded what uh, reminded me what I was going to explain next, uh, Mr. Redneck Wildcat. So um, basically, there's two skills in every school tree that are a be, are able to be way bounded. And when you way bound that those two skills, they're they're designated skills, guys. You cannot. Hmm. Huh, which one do I want? It's that those are two designated skills in each school tree and when you um, unbound it so the second last pip of the node in the tree the focus school will be max of whatever it it supplies the next pip will be the ability of that node to be placed on any other school tree so there's if there's two way bandable skills in every school tree that means there's 10 um skills that can be way bounded and eight skills total extra on each school tree since we have to be using one school tree and um then there's um the other four school trees two abilities that you can place on to those school trees now keep in mind that little technique that i explained earlier to know where the island is spawning needs to have one of the school trees active uh, way bounds 
waybound passives. And that waybound passive is mind sprint from Naramond. That um, that ability needs to be um, waybounded before um, you can dash twice as far. It'll increase your dashing distance by two times. And um, so if you don't have that equipped it, just know it's twice as many, twice as many dashes. So it would be uh, four dashes go right, um, six dashes go left, and eight dashes to the right, and then it would be any more and be straight out at the end. All right. As a shield breaker, I suggest not having a melee weapon. I don't even need melee weapon at all. But I, I just choose to. If, if anything, you're going to be using Exodia, um, Exodia Contagion. That's a, um, it's an arcane for your Zaw. And that will allow you to break Vombless easier. Well, there's no controlling it. You see, you, you don't move your mouse. When you're void dashing, all you're doing is holding down the crouch button and pressing jump. So the whole time I explain this, whoops, I'm holding down the crouch button in my, in operator. A second here. Okay, so I'm holding down the crouch button. I press the jump button. And then, so I, I, I'm, I'm in operator, I hold down the crouch button. I'm holding down the crouch button, holding time I explain this. I press the jump button, I hold back, and then press jump again. Holding down the crouch button and pressing jump is all is required to go forward. Holding another directional button will go in that direction. You do not have to be holding W or forward to be dashing forward. Realize it. Yes, the, the PC only prizes uh, for my giveaways, absolutely. And my Discord giveaways are only for PC as well. Sorry. Yeah, of course. I roll until someone claims it. I'm not going to roll it and be like, oh, well, you're on PS4. I can't give it to you. No, it's... I, I won't be able to give it to you, no, but I'm going to re-roll it, of course. <laughs> it's too late, you must buy a PC. Um, I do run up the legs um, to spawn the wisps, absolutely. But um, not all spawns are necessary to do that. It depends on the Eilon's elevation. Uh, because... Like, like, climbing the legs is a really, really, really good habit to have because you're going to guarantee the wisps be spawning on the ground. But I know where, which spawns I need to do it, and which spawns I don't have to do it. And sometimes I just do it for fun. Because it looks cool. Why don't you get crit bonuses? My crit bonus is coming from Harrow. My crit damage is coming from the um, the shields, 200% crit damage. My worm is giving me 20% um, chance to increase critical hits. My zoom is crit damage. I mean, I'm getting a lot of critical enhancements, guys. Was that Hydralist? Yes. I don't, I, mean, I don't know what you mean. Every sniper has a different crit multiplier when I zoom in. It's crit damage for Rubico. But the Harrow is really what's giving me the crit. Harrow is buff. Harrow is not on the team for the immunity, guys. Harrow is on the team for the crit chance. And the reason for that is Harrow's buff is an additive crit chance. Um, so, if my weapon only had 50% critical chance and Harrow did a full buff, then... I would be always getting a critical hit indefinitely. It'd be a hundred percent crit chance. Yeah, B Dub, you're right.
All right. Let's be putting down wisps. As long as I'm getting that little yellow marker, I know I'm spawning a wisp. And if I do it elevated by void dashing straight up or whatever I'm doing, um, as long as I'm in the air, like up here kind of thing, void blasting, falling down, I'm spawning wisps that are going to be on the ground. If I'm not, if I'm on the ground void blasting, I have a chance for the wisps to go under the ground and it'll keep on falling and no one be able to get those wisps. That's 100% extra damage for all amps for the next 12 seconds. Congrats, Kinsen. Congrats. Of course it was. All right, thanks for the follow. Uh, cut la ana. All right. Oh, I might be able to go for another run. Nice. Don't have your heart set on six by three. If um, you're going like, do the best you can. If everyone does the best they can, well, that's all you can ask for. Don't be like, okay, like the first time, like trying it, you're not going to get a, a fucking six or whatever. And all the X means is literally, um, it's how many times the first number is how many instances you go into the planes. The second number is how many islands you capture each instance you're in the planes. So if you're doing a 4x3, you're entering 4 times and killing the Gauntlet four times. So you're doing a 1x2, you're only killing the Gauntlet. If you're doing a 1x1, one one, you're only killing the Terror List. My suggestion to get a good team and party members every time is to be um, going in, doing the, going to recruit chat, looking for casual Eilons, or a 2x3 squad that's looking, or 3x3 three three squad, or whatever squad y you, you can do, like, you can do your part in. And then, and then, you guys are going crazy now. And then, if, um, if they are doing their role, and you enjoy them as a player, like, and enjoy them, um, them in your team, and they like Eidolons, you like Eidolons. Why not party up again with them? You know what I'm saying? There's no reason not to. And they'll add to your army of players to play with and get that next level because you're going to grow together, um, share your tips, tricks. Um, you know what I'm saying? It's all, it all adds up. And um, you'll be able to get your four by threes and then five by threes. And you know, you can't do a six by three until you can do a five by three, right? So that, that, that's, that's what it all starts somewhere. Because I'm streaming, and um, I cast my same buff a lot, and I put down a lot of energy pads at the same time, too, to guarantee, because I'm looking at chat 24-7, to ensure that I'm answering you guys' questions um, thorough. 
and uh, I'm rereading the questions sometimes too. He's going to do the hamster swim. I don't try to ignore you guys. What? Even if you're on console, guys, um, you can still rebind. I uh, so, sorry, you can still customize your key bindings for um, the uh, um, energy pads. You can customize it to any button for example on this wheel like for example my slot five is number pad zero so i just have to oops i just have to hit number pad zero and i'll put whatever's in slot five which happens to be my energy pads my arc wings on there and uh, my arc guns on there too um what else do i have on there now a couple of things It's a close one if we want this. We might actually fail. How much time do I have? Just to say. Uh, <laughs> I, I accidentally had my dragon key on, dude. Uh, I just have lower shields. It's alright. What do you mean throwing it? I don't know. We can do it. We can do it! Alright. Remember guys, if you're holding forward to dash straight... Um... That will mean that, um... You cannot put down energy pads half the time. I don't know if this is a PC issue only or what, but um, it is uh, some the case for it's, it's definitely a case for um, PC shard. Nice. Cool. That device is insufficient. You are directed to secure and employ additional idle on lures. Okay. Here we go. He really likes me. DMA972, thank you for that follow, sir. Get yourself some point aronies if you want to use those into the giveaway. Shoot Dylan's dick. I don't know, weenie. No, oh, I blew his balls. Busting my balls, man. Sentient energy contained. You are close. All right. Act now. <laughs> Twenty second late instance with a teleport. That's hilarious. Still got a six. Nasty. You can ask by a shock trooper every five seconds. You might you might not be wrong. <laughs> oh shit.
All right. There we go. Cool. Lurus might not teleport. Does a day check. Oh, you dirty. Kami, dirty. Uh, as much as it is a blessing to be able to move our lures around, some people are just dildos and um, teleport to the end of the map. Can be a curse. All right. Well, hopefully you got picked up a tip or two off this. And like I said, I stream every day, eight hours a day. So you can always check out my stream and ask me questions because things change in Eilon Hunts. And since I stream every day, if something changes, I should be able to, well, I will be able to help you out. Um, like I said, I, I have enough Eilon Hunts to explain anything. I have 12,200 60 right now with the kills of being glitch kills the six by threes are always kills like the six by three is always a kill on the last one and um you know what i'm saying thank you thank you for the follow mr mo 93 b 6040 um so let's um run that giveaway i am going to end this